Oh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another uh, service here at Sunburst. I hope all of you that attended the garden event had a great time and got to harvest and plant and get your fingernails full of dirt. So the topic we're going to talk about today is self-discovery. Who am I? And I found a quote from Socrates, and he he said, the unexamined life is not worth the living. And I think if we went around the room and, and did a poll, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that all of us have been trying to figure out who we are and why we're on this journey of self-discovery. And it's interesting because when we look around, we see so many people that are so, I don't know, so, so driven on outward manifestations of career or, and family or wealth, um, so many different things outwardly, instead of trying to go inward and discovering the wondrous, amazing existence of the inner space within us. When we look at some of the ancient ones, we can see like Buddha, who had a very comfortable life, and he was born into, but walked away from that in his journey of self-discovery. Jesus also, there's a big gap in the Bible from like around 13 years of age till 30. And Yogananda has taught us that he traveled to India. There's records of him um, staying at certain monasteries and studying there in India. And more recently, we have Yogananda's experiences and his autobiography of his journey of self-discovery. and. And uh, David shared with me this morning that 124 years ago today, Yogananda addressed the International Congress of Religious Liberals on, uh, in 1920. Today's kind of a special day. And even more recently, we have, Yoga, uh, we have Norm's uh, journey, the founder of Sunburst, in his autobiography, Love, Life, God. It's also very interesting. I a couple, I think a couple birthdays ago, my daughter gave me a uh, this um, program called StoryWorth, where you pay a, a fee. I think it's like sixty bucks or something, and you they send you the ability to write your life story, and you can even put pictures in it. And then when you're done, you send it back to them, and they print a book for you. And it was really a, an interesting journey for myself to go back and start actually writing down my journey, how I got to, the, to this moment. And uh, it's, a, it's a good exercise. Because <laughs> you start to see how the pieces which you thought were independent of each other, really one led into another, led into another, led into another, and pushed us forward in our inner journey. We're really lucky in, in that we live in a country that allows us the freedoms that we have, and that it has the resources that food is available, that water is available, and we have that space and that um, support to be able to travel inward and, and learn more about who we really are. 
there's other areas of the world that aren't that's so lucky. And some are just trying to find food. Some are in war ravaged areas. People are being oppressed. Freedoms are taken away from them. Many are just every day are just trying to find food and water. Very stressful and allows little time to pursue those inner journeys that we so need to do. Also, when we observe people around us and in headlines and magazines and everything, they're th traveling through life seemingly not seeking their inner self. And the things that can shape that are the family that you are born into, the culture that you're born into, and society in general can help drive that outer desire and outer life journey that so many people are, are on. And a lot of people define themselves by the job they have or the relationship whether they're a parent or a student or a CEO or whatever it is, that's how they define themselves. And this often becomes their primary identity. I was blessed because, I, because I'm not very um, outgoing. I'm more of an introvert in general. I always have been. I observe more things and then maybe somebody that's more outgoing and extroverted and i just observed like through high school the roles that my friends and some of the acquaintances i had in high school their goal was to graduate high school get a job get married have kids you know that was and i just watched them each one of them do that and then there was another segment that were graduate go to college get a job, have family, kids. And I was not really uh, feeling any of that at the time, but I didn't know what I wanted, where I was going, or what I wanted to do. And because of certain circumstances, um, i.e. the draft, I got drafted into the Army. And that also was an, an interesting session and observation for me, seeing these young kids just going off to war and a lot of them not coming back. And they all had hopes and dreams of jobs, family, kids. It was all taken away from them. It's interesting when you study the Native American culture, many of the different tribes had a tradition where when a male child turned 12 or 13, somewhere around there, they were sent off on a vision quest, basically with just a knife, I think, and a bow and arrow maybe, so they could hunt for some food. But the main goal was to really discover themselves what was it going to be their place in the tribe? And I thought that was, when I thought about that, I was like, wow, that was really a, an interesting and good tradition that they had. For myself, I started kind of asking myself questions when I was around 11 or 12. And I think some of that might have been because my my family moved a lot. Um, by the time I was in seventh grade, we had moved seven times. So I'm, when I was putting this outline together, I was thinking, well, why, you know, why was I always um, asking myself questions of who am I, where am I going? And I think it might have con been contributed by the fact that I got pulled up, my roots got pulled up so many times. 
and I had to make new friends and get used to the new culture of that area that we were moving to and it caused me to really question things innerly. But my mantra of my whole life has, has always been to move forward on my journey and my outward journey and my inward journey, knowing in the back of my mind that I can always come back. I can always go back to where I was before and, you know, be happy. But I had this thing that was driving me forward. So I had that support of that inner knowing that I could come back not be afraid of going forward. So there's some tools that we can have that we can adapt that um, help with our inner search, and one of them is journaling. Um, this is one that I have not done very much, but I know a lot of people do. Um, and kind of writing that life story for that story worth was kind of a journaling experience for me, and it was really, really interesting. The other thing we can do is just ask, ask ourselves the right question. Um, we got this new mic, and I think it just fell out of my shirt. Part of it did anyway. Let me put it here. Um, Ask the right questions of who, who am I without my job? What if my job was gone? Who am I? Um, what about my current relationships? What if they disappeared? Who am I? Or all my possessions, these people that have been hit with hurricanes, all of a sudden, everything they had is gone. And when you think about that, you just go, well, what's left? Well, what's left is, is ourselves and where we're at and what drives us to be happy and, and what's really important in our lives. Meditation is an excellent way to explore inwardly. It helps us self-reflect and and we can sit in contemplation and prayer and peace. And once you've identified the things that help you on your inner search, then you need to prioritize it in each day. And not be afraid to disappoint your friends and family if it means that you're staying true to your inner journey. It was interesting when I joined Sunburst, um, my parents were very doubtful and wary of what I was doing. And for years, there was a friction there. And as they got older, and I was in Sunburst longer, and they saw the changes that I had gone through and the fruits of sunburst. And they actually came to me one day and said how proud they were of me, and the journey that I took. It truly really meant a lot to me. So this journey um, for each of us requires kindness towards ourselves. And Acknowledging that it's it's all right that we don't have the answers. Because in due time, they'll come as we keep exploring, turning over each inner rock and discover what's there. And obviously, it requires perseverance. <laughs> you have to stick with it. So because it's a lifelong process, we, we need to stay open to 
change and evolution. Who we are today might not be who we are tomorrow. And that's all part of the growth, of the inner growth. And if we sit down at the end of each day and ask ourselves, what did I learn about myself today? It's always a really good exercise to do. I found this quote, and I'm not sure who actually wrote it, but they said, take the time to explore who we are beneath the surface. The journey may not always be easy, but it is the most rewarding one we will ever take. <clears throat> so the meditation technique that we teach here is Kriya, and which Yogananda often called the superhighway to God. And it really helps us discover who we are and where we're going when we leave here. It helps to remove any exterior labels that we have and shows us who we are at our core, our inner being. Norm used to say that we're astronauts of inner space. I always, always like that. Gandhi said, the spiritual weapon of self-purification, intangible as it seems, is the most potent means of revolutionizing one's environment and loosening the external shackles. It works delicately and invisibly. It is an intense process though it might often seem a weary and long-drawn process. It is the straightest way to liberation, the surest and the quickest. And no effort can be too great for it. What it requires is faith, an unshakable mountain like faith that flinches from nothing. So as we move into our silent period of meditation for about 15 minutes, as, you med- as we meditate, let's strip away any external labels that are on us and what's left when those are gone, when they're stripped away. And discover who we are at our core. So I'll lead us in with some alms, follow along. Oh. 
Swami Vivekananda said, we are responsible for what we are and whatever we wish ourselves to be. We have the power to make ourselves. If what we are now has been the result of our own past actions, it certainly follows that whatever we wish to be in the future can be produced by our present actions. So we have to know how to act. Yogananda used to talk about how the whole creation, all the images, all the life forms, all exist in the infinite sea of the divine, including each of us. And it's like the ocean, very calm, endless, infinite. But we incarnate, it's like a wave that starts when you look out and you start to see a wave start to form on the ocean. He used to tell us that's what we're like. As we incarnate, we become a wave. And it's so easy when we're up there as a wave to think, I'm special. Um, look at all the beauty, the sun shining. And to forget the essence of who we are, we get distracted. And we don't think about the shore that's coming. But if we're really aware, when we incarnate and we become a wave, we can stand tall and know inwardly who we really are and know that we have an infinite amount of time existing as that wave before we crash on the shore and that we need to make the most of it in our inward journey, discovering our pure self, and meeting our Creator face to face. Because once we hit that shore, we melt back into the ocean, into the infinite, only to reincarnate again at some point in the future. I really love that analogy. I, I always often think of it when I'm down at the beach. Aristotle said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. I'd like to end with a, <clears throat> with a prayer and follow along with me. O oh, Divine Spirit, our Mother and Father, we give thanks this day for this gift of life that you have given us, for this opportunity to discover inwardly who we really are, why we're here, and where we're going when we leave. Help us keep our focus on that inward journey and not get distracted by external things. We are so happy to have this opportunity to have your love, your blessing. 
Thank you, dear spirit. Amen.